Hello, everybody. My name is Masaki Suzuki. I am a LSG MEC delegate from KDDI. I'm also the rapporteur of GS MEC40 on MEC Federation Enablement APIs and the lead author of its white paper number 49. I am pleased to present episode number 10 of MEC Tech Series on MEC Federation Deployment Considerations to you all. In this episode, we will learn about MEC Federation architectural aspects, including an aggregation scenario in addition to more general scenarios, business cases for MEC Federation, potential deployment options that enable the business stories, and I will also quickly introduce a number of other key considerations. For your information, this episode is based on its white paper number 49. I'd also like to highlight that an overview of MEC Federation has been already provided in episode number two of MEC Tech series. It's a Mac recently defined a reference architecture variant based on GR Mac 35, which is a variant for Mac Federation. This variant contains a new functional element, namely the Mac Federator. This variant also contains new reference points, MFM and MFF. MFM is between Mac Orchestrator and Mac Federator. MFF is between two MEC federators and therefore provides the link between different MEC systems in the federation. MEC federator enables MEC federation between MEC systems by supporting the following functionalities. Registration of MEC system, MEC system discovery, information exchange between MEC systems, application monitoring, and lifecycle hook management across MEC systems. As introduced in episode number two, the MEC Federation concept has been elaborated by GSMA Operator Platform Group, where the concept of an operator platform has been introduced to enable federation between operator systems by organizing the correspondence between the GSMA OPG it's Mac and three GPP SA6 architectures. A synergized and integrated architecture can be drawn. For instance, MFF in Etz Mac corresponds with EWBI in GSMA OP. MM4 and MM6 in Etz Mac corresponds with SBI in GSMA OP. On the other hand, MP1 could correspond with H3 in 3GPP SA6, also with NBI in GSMA OP. I'd like to note that this figure could be updated since the correspondence is still under discussion, as well as its organization makes progress individually. If we look at the GSMA OPG permanent difference document, the shared operator platform scenario highlights the potential architecture complexities. The main motivation of the shared OP scenario is to facilitate seamless access to its application across federated MEC systems, even though small MEC systems may not offer their own OP. The simplified architecture indicated Operator 2's resources are open to Operator 1, which needs extended consideration from the viewpoint of the ITZMEC architecture. According to the description of the southbound interface in GSMA PRD, we understand that firstly, MEC orchestrator is at the northbound end of the SBICR. Secondly, its quad resources include its apps and its platforms managed by network operators and its quad service providers. Thirdly, impossible contradiction to the MEO placement, the NFVO is at the southbound end of the SBICR. 
you can easily see the complexity of alignment between such an architecture and the MEC reference architecture. The business case for MEC Federation rests on the ability to deploy MEC systems at various scales. This is achieved both by federating individual MEC systems together and by enabling systems to be integrated by new increment users. As the whole picture, you can see the flexibility and applicability of MEC Federation. If two MEC systems have a MEC Federator, they can organize peer-to-peer -peer connections. If one of the MEC Federators has MEC Federation broker role, they organize have and spoke topology. Additionally, in the case of shared OP, a MEC system is allowed to join a MEC Federation without its own MEC Federator, which means an additional MEC system can be integrated with lower overheads. MEC Federation can be organized among one operator or across multiple operators, also aggregated across small operators and large operators even they have different level of features. Various forms of the deployment appear in the business cases. For the wider compatibility, it is important to align with both its MEC architecture and GSMA OP architecture. We have tried to describe various forms of deployments based on the its MEC architecture while also mapping to the deployment options to the GSMA OP architecture. In the case where each operator has its own OP instance, the federated MEC systems are linked via a their individual MEC federators through the MFF reference point. In the case of a shared OP, one OP instance links to multiple operators a single MEC federator associates with multiple MEC orchestrators. Note that the coverage of operators' resources is still under discussion. Extended scope of OPA is not defined in GSMA so far, but the current OP definition cannot cover a part of MEC system of operator 1. If the federated MEC systems are owned by a single operator, two cases can be considered. First case, there are two separate MEC systems inside a single operator, but there is one MEC orchestrator which links with multiple MEC platform managers and OSS. In this case, MEC orchestrator is required to connect with multiple MEPM. But in general, a single MEC orchestrator is not supposed to orchestrate multiple MEC systems. Second case, there are two MEC systems with shared OSS, but with each having their own MEC orchestrator that links to a single MEC federator. In this case, MEC federator needs to connect with multiple MEC orchestrators and those MEC orchestrators need to connect with the single OSS. OSS is supposed to be a singleton in an operator's MEC systems. Note that MEO to MEO direct communication is not supported by its MEC specifications, even if it train the same operator's systems. Besides the deployment options from architectural aspect, the white paper indicated further key considerations. As for connection between federated MEC systems, a concept of MEC Federation interconnection provider is introduced, which is based on the idea of carrier neutral facility. As for an aspect of multi domain orchestration, a concept of infrastructure as code based on multi-domain orchestration is introduced. As for security, the white paper indicated the importance of this aspect, which encourages readers 
to further study its white paper number 46 and GRMEC 41. As for Northbound APIs, the white paper provides an annex to introduce how we consider common API framework and camera project from the ETSIMEC perspective. To conclude this episode, here is what we have learned today. Architectural aspects of MEC Federation, business stories of MEC Federation, potential deployment options, and additional key considerations. If you are interested to learn more, please check its white paper number 49. Stay tuned on the forthcoming its MEC standard, specifically group specification MEC 40. Follow also future episodes of the Mac Tech series. Thank you so much for your attention and interest. Enjoy the rest of Mac Tech series.